Hello and welcome back to Financial Madness where we look at all things personal finance. Today is part two in a mini series of tax efficient investments. If you missed part one, be sure to check out this video here where we talk about venture capital trusts, which is one vehicle to earn tax savings when you invest. In today's video, we will be looking at another type and they are called Enterprise Investment Schemes or EIS for short. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Bow. So what are enterprise investment schemes? The purpose of these is actually quite similar to the venture capital trusts that we mentioned last week, in that it is a government initiative set up in 1994 to incentivize investors to invest in small high risk companies by offering tax incentives to the investor. Now, although investing in small companies and startups are high risk, it can often lead to significant reward. And with the tax incentives added on top, this can be a real opportunity for investors who are keen to take more risk. So how do EISs work? Well, there are actually two ways in which an investor can invest in an EIS. The first way is to invest in one specific qualifying company. And then the second way is to invest in a fund or portfolio manager who invests in a variety of qualifying companies for you. For companies to qualify as an EIS, they must meet a certain criteria. The key one is that they must be an unquoted company, which simply put means it is not listed on a recognized stock exchange. Although there is one caveat to this, and is that they can be listed on AIM, which is considered unquoted in the EIS criteria. Other key points in the criteria include that the company must have a permanent establishment here in the UK, their gross assets must be 15 million or less before investment, or up to 16 million after investment, have up to 250 employees, and have only been trading for seven years or less. Now you would have noticed in the graphics that there are some caveats for companies that are considered as KICs. Now KICs stand for Knowledge Intensive Companies, which is defined as a company that considers research and development as its main business. KICs were actually a recent addition to the EIS criteria following on from the 2017 Treasury budget, and thus KICs have a slightly different criteria to non-KIC companies. Now, something that is not in the criteria, but I think it should be, is subscribing to this channel. So what are the tax benefits when investing in an EIS? Now, the list I am about to share is what is currently available. However, please do remember that these rules can change and they are dependent on your own tax circumstance. The first one is that you can claim up to 30% income tax relief and save up to £300,000 on your income tax bill. Now, this is probably the biggest incentive for investors to invest in an EIS, especially for someone who pays a lot of money in income tax. The limit of investing in an EIS in a single tax year is one million pounds, but if you solely invest in kicks, then the limit is two million pounds. This would realize a saving of up to 600,000 pounds in your income tax bill. So let's say a person earns 55,000 pounds from their main job. That puts them in the higher rate band at a 40% tax rate, and they would be subject to paying around about 9,432 pounds in income tax for that year. Now let's say that they invest 10,000 pounds in an EIS. They can then claim up to 30% of their investment as a tax relief. 30% of 10,000 is 3,000 pounds. This means they can reduce their income tax bill from 9,432 to 6,432. So it would actually be fair to say that when you do invest in an EIS, you initially achieve a 30% return on your investment, as that tax relief you obtain will mean more money will be sent to your bank account rather than to HMRC. Obviously, depending on the performance of the EIS and its fees, that true return will vary and can be negative as well as positive. To ensure you can claim the 30% tax relief, because remember, it is up to 30%, you do have to follow these rules. So firstly, you can only invest up to 1 million or 2 million pounds for kicks in EISs per tax year. You have to hold your investments for at least three years to benefit, and the company must remain as a qualifying EIS company within those three years as well. Your income tax liability must exceed a certain limit to achieve this 30%. This is why in my example, I chose someone who is in the higher rate tax band because they are currently subject to 40% income tax, which exceeds the 30% relief amount that they would be getting from this type of investment. And therefore it will be very likely that they'll be entitled to the full 30% relief. 
If you are, however, a basic income tax holder, you currently pay 20% in income tax, which is less than the relief that is offered. Therefore, you will not be able to take full advantage of the 30% tax relief, and you will be limited to the actual tax liability you have, which is 20%. Another tax benefit is that any growth your EIS investment sees will not be subject to any capital gains tax whatsoever, just as long as you hold the shares for at least three years and the company remains an EIS qualifying company for those three years as well. Now, still sticking to the topic of capital gains tax, if you make capital gains outside of an EIS through the sale of another asset, let's say you make £30,000 profit through the sale of your stocks. If you are subject to capital gains on this, you can instead defer the capital gains payments and put the proceeds in an EIS to delay the payment. Once you get your money out of an EIS, you will have to pay capital gains tax, or alternatively, you can reinvest into another EIS and defer once more. Another powerful tax advantage is that if your EIS investment falls to zero, or they are worth less than the amount you originally invested in, minus the tax relief you obtained, you would be entitled to loss relief. Now, this will allow you to offset this loss against either your capital gains or income tax bill. So say, for example, I lost £5,000 in an EIS investment and I'm a higher rate earner. I can offset 40% of this loss, which would work out to be £2,000 from either my income or capital gains tax bill, whichever is the most advantageous to me. So although I still make a loss, my loss is actually £3,000, not £5,000, which helps soften the blow when investing in risky assets like these. And finally, another key tax benefit is that you can get inheritance tax relief if your EIS investment qualifies for business property relief, or BPR. If it is, then the investment you made into the EIS may be eligible for 100% exemption from inheritance tax, as long as you've held the shares for at least two years upon death. Cool, so those are the key tax benefits of investing in an EIS. However, I do want to stress it is advised to seek professional advice on these products as they are highly complex and can differ between individuals with different tax situations. So how do you claim the tax relief? So you can actually claim the EIS income tax relief on the same year your EIS investment was made. You claim income tax relief in your self-assessment tax returns for the tax year in which your shares were issued. You do not have to wait until you send in your tax returns to see the benefits of the relief. You can do this by asking HMRC to make adjustments to your tax code or requesting a tax refund. There is also a way that you can use your tax relief and apply it to the previous tax year. This is called EIS carry back relief. Now this can be really useful to investors if they have not accrued the appropriate amount of tax liability in the year that the investment was made. And therefore they can allocate the relief to the previous year in its entirety or have the relief split across the two years if appropriate. Growth Capital Ventures provide a really nice example of how this works. So for example, an individual invests £100,000 into an EIS eligible investment opportunity in the year 2023-24 tax year. However, they have not accrued sufficient tax liabilities in that year to claim the relief against it. They instead choose to claim the £30,000 tax relief they are due against the 2022-23 income tax bill. So how can you invest in an EIS? So just like with regular investing, various platforms offer EIS products as part of their offering. Some key ones are Octopus Investments, Growth Capital Ventures, Wealth Club, and Crowdcube. Let's quickly go through one example at Octopus Investments, which has an Octopus Ventures EIS service, which is currently open for new investments. If you look at the description, you can see that this investment allows you to put your money towards a portfolio of 10 to 15 early stage companies. This page goes into reasons to invest and the risks to bear in mind. And at the very bottom, it gives you options on how to apply. It gives you the option to apply via a financial advisor or a phone number to a call so you can apply directly. I would also highly recommend, just like you would do with any other normal investment, is to read the key information document or brochure before making a decision. But particularly what you want to be looking at these documents is the fee section of an EIS. As you can see, there are three ways you can invest in an EIS, and the fees do range from the 5 to 7% mark, which does mean these investments are pricey. So is it worth it? So with these type of investments, I wouldn't necessarily have this as your first port of call in the investment world. The fees are quite high, the portfolios are high risk, and the entry to investing is also high as well. 
But if you are a mature investor and you consider yourself a risk taker, then this may be a good fit, especially as the tax relief benefits offer significant tax savings, which in turn can soften the blow by acting as a buffer of protection if your investments do end up going south. Crowdcube does an excellent job of demonstrating this in their example. They assume you make a £10,000 investment and you are in the 45% tax bracket, which means you are an additional rate holder. Case one, the company does well and doubles its value and you hold your shares for three years. Your overall gain will be £13,000. £10,000 would be the profit from the share sale, which would be exempt from capital gains, and £3,000 is your income tax relief. Case number two is that the company value stays the same and you hold your shares for three years. Your gain would be £3,000 as although you didn't make a profit, you got income tax relief acting as that buffer of protection as I mentioned before. And case three, the company closes and your shares are worth nothing. Your losses actually turn out to be just £3,850, not £10,000 of which you invested. So the way this works is firstly, you get income tax relief of £3,000. So that £10,000 investment actually was only £7,000. But because you incurred a loss, the loss relief you can offset to your income tax is another £3,150. So you only lose 3,850. So these tax advantages are very powerful. And again, I would highly recommend speaking to a financial advisor to get your head around these tax rules. Cool, so that is it for this week's video. Please do let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions or comments, or if there's anything I missed. And remember to like and subscribe. See you later, bye. bye.